Henry Brown was an outlaw and lawman, and also a member of the famous regulators. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Henry Brown was born in 1857 near Rolla, Missouri. He was an orphan and was raised by his aunt and uncle until the age of 17 when he left home and headed west. He drifted through various cowboy jobs in Colorado and Texas, supposedly killing a man in a gunfight in the Texas Panhandle. By 1877, a 20-year-old Brown had made his way to the New Mexico Territory, where he took part in some of the Lincoln County War. He was working on John Tunstall's Rio Feliz Ranch and became known as one of the infamous regulators, fighting alongside Billy the Kid. As a regulator, he took part in many skirmishes, including one on April 1st, 1878, where he and several other men ambushed and killed Lincoln County Sheriff William Brady, who was indirectly responsible for the death of his boss, John Tunstall. And three days later, he was also involved at the gunfight at Blazer's Mill. After the killing of Sheriff Brady, the regulators were wanted men, fugitives, and they spent several months in hiding. However, on July 15th, they were ambushed at Alexander McSween's home by members of the house and some of Brady's men. Henry Brown was one of the three regulators not actually in McSween's house, but instead was sniping at Brady's men from a grain warehouse behind the Tunstall store. He escaped with Billy the Kid and the others when the siegers set fire to the house. McSween was shot down while fleeing the blaze, and his death essentially marked the end of the Lincoln County War. Several months later, in the fall of 1878, Brown, Billy, and several other regulators made their way to the town of Tuscosa in the Texas Panhandle. The regulators eventually returned to their old haunts, but Brown, named in two murder warrants in the state of New Mexico, wisely remained in Texas, where he eventually became a lawman. Soon he was fired from this position and began drifting through the Indian Territory in Oklahoma and into Kansas. In July 1882, he was about 25 years old, and he settled in Caldwell, Kansas. During the days of the Chisholm Trail, Caldwell became known as a rough-and-tumble cowboy town. The Caldwell Post claimed that half of the residents were the worst desperados between the Missouri and the Rio Grande. Lawmen struggled to keep peace and sometimes died in the effort. Caldwell's marshal was killed in 1881 during a shootout. Six months later, on the same day, the assistant marshal and the new marshal were killed in separate shootouts. Caldwell, Kansas, a rough cattle town similar to Dodge City. And it was here he was first appointed assistant marshal of the city and then promoted to marshal about five months later. 1882. He teamed up with another outlaw lawman from Texas named Ben Wheeler and the pair began cleaning up the town. Contemporaries of Brown described him as a man who didn't smoke, drink, chew, or gamble, and was noted to be in regular attendance at the Methodist Church. He was exceedingly modest and in fact bashful, but he had a square-set jaw 
not unlike that of a bulldog, and his face indicated firmness and a lack of physical fear. And when duty called, Brown's demeanor changed immediately. He was easily angered. His temper flared instantly, and his outwardly meek manner transformed into one of deadly, grave purpose. In appreciation for his service to Caldwell, a grateful community gifted him with an extensively engraved gold and silver mounted Winchester rifle. A silver medallion was affixed to the stock and inscribed was presented to City Marshal H.N. Brown for valuable services rendered in behalf of the citizens of Caldwell, 1882. After establishing himself around town, he met a local girl named Alice Levagood, the daughter of a local brick mason. In the early spring of 1884, the couple married, purchased a house and furnishings, and seemingly settled down. However, unknown to his wife and the citizens of Caldwell, Brown had been living beyond his means, and his debts were rising. In April 1884, under the ruse of tracking down a murder in Indian Territory, Brown and several others headed to Medicine Lodge, Kansas, where they attempted to rob the Medicine Valley Bank. In the morning, when the bank opened, three robbers entered, one carrying a Winchester rifle. A fourth man circled to the back, Residents heard a rapid succession of gunfire from inside and out. The bank president reached for his revolver, but was shot by Brown. The clerk was shot twice, but was able to stagger to the vault and trigger the combination lock. Both men died soon after. Meanwhile, an alarm was raised on the street outside the bank. Brown and the other outlaws fled under fire, pursued by a posse composed of 12 cowboys that happened to be in a stable directly across from the bank. The four fugitives closely pursued by the posse unwittingly rode into a box canyon several miles south of the town and were eventually forced to surrender. The group were then taken back to the jail in Medicine Lodge. It was clear that the townspeople wanted instant justice. Realizing that a lynching was imminent, the four men painfully began to remove their shackles and leg irons. When the lynch mob came at 9 p.m. and opened the door, Brown burst through the startled mob to an alley alongside the jail. As he ran past, he was blasted with both barrels of a shotgun at almost point-blank range. He died being nearly torn in half. Wheeler ran about a hundred yards before being horribly wounded in a barrage of gunfire. Brown's body was returned to Caldwell, where he's buried in the Caldwell City Cemetery. His Winchester rifle is on display at the Kansas Museum of History. Thank you so much for watching today. Be sure to check my playlists for cool videos, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode. Have a great day.